Hey guys, let's make some beads. Hey, so this morning it's raining and I can't ride my bike, so I'm going to sit here and make some beads with you guys. And maybe the weather will clear up for me later. So the other day, well, it's been a while, it's been a month or two, someone asked me if I had a video on making fabric beads. And I did not. And I said, no, I've never made any. I've never made any fabric beads. I've never made any paper beads. So they asked me if I would show my take on making fabric beads. And I said, sure, but it would be a while because I had other stuff lined up. Well, that time has come and I played around the other day making my very first fabric beads. It was a lot of fun. I didn't make any paper beads, so I don't know if I'll do that on video today or not. But I did make a bunch of fabric beads and I've actually used one in a project I'm working on. In the last video I showed you a couple of them in my hand through in the video at some point. And here's the progress. That's all I'm showing you. <laughs> and I'm going to be using my beads in some projects, which I'll show in a later video, but I have also made a few things using the beads that I'll show you today. So let me put these aside. Where's my little... I'm keeping them in this thing. Um, let me show you close up first real quick. Just a few at a time, just so you can see the gist of what I did. Uh, that says friend on it. Oops. Oops. Got to fix that one. Got to get that one. Okay. So, here's some things I've done with my beads. And I'm going to take them apart here and show you individually. I've got them on a little binder here just to keep them all together. The first one I did, I used some sari ribbon to attach some beads. Uh, plastic beads and one of my fabric beads and I really like this but you have to be careful because sari ribbon can be um, fragile and if you don't know what sari ribbon is look at the description box below and I will have a description of what sari ribbon is and I made this a little hook that you can clamp onto things okay so that's one thing let's see if I can line them up here and then I just made a few more different odd and things. Now this is an odd piece because I found this. This is something I found laying around, I don't know where, I think in the road, <laughs> I'm not sure. And it's an odd thing for me to find anything like this to use because around here you just don't find stuff like that. And so I made one of my little bead charms with it. Again, just using plastic beads and some little, they're plastic, but they look metal. And this next one. And this one. I have to say this is my least favorite bead, but I love these colors together. And this one. And this one. This has a little flower down at the bottom. And these are done with, what do they call, what's it called, what's it called? Uh, jewelry cord. This is jewelry cord here. I didn't use any more of these. So you can hang them, you know, hook them on something, or later on attach them to something. But anyway, I'm messing around. You can't even see them. I'm wiggling around so much. And this one has a little butterfly in the middle. Well, not in the middle, kind of at the bottom. And this one. Um, my way of making fabric beads, if you know me at all, it's going to be the simplest, the easiest, and the least stressful way possible. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I make my beads. Now, I don't make my beads stable. Like, for instance, this is using a larger size dowel to wrap on, but in the center of the bead is nothing. I didn't put any kind of 
hard object or anything inside to stabilize the speed. So it can be squished down. And I don't care. Uh, as long as it's simple, easy, and fun for me, I'll do it. If it's a lot of detail work, I probably won't do it. So I will show you what I do. Let me get this all cleaned up off my desk, and then we'll get started. Okay, to make my beads, I used my fabric scraps. And I've got a bin here that, this is such a tall lid, that has odd and end scraps. And I'm going to tell you now, I did not cut my scraps to make the beads where they're wider at one end and smaller at the other unless it was already done that way. Like for instance, this one, if I started at this end, it'd be wider and it would go narrower down here. It's already made that way from something I cut. But for this one here, if I used this, it's not. And if it was like this, I left it like this. Because like I said, the easier and the more simple, the better and the more I'll do it. So I use fabric scraps. I also have some dowels here. There's a really small, well, it's not a dowel, it's actually a skewer. They're very small though, and it's not my favorite thing to use because I like a little larger hole in my bead. The other thing I use is a larger dowel, and I don't know what size this is. It might be a quarter inch dowel. It doesn't say on there, and I'm not gonna measure it because it's just a dowel. Just use any size you want. Whatever looks good to you, feels comfortable to you, use that. You can use the end of a pen. You can use the end of a pencil or a paintbrush. Whatever you want to make your bead. And this is a doll stuffing tool that came in a bag of stuffing that I got a long time ago. So I could use that because it's a different size. So there's three sizes here. And the beads I just showed you were only made with these two. This one I was not using at the time, but I just grabbed it just now just to show you. Okay, and then I'm gonna use some glue. And this one I'm gonna use Turbo Tacky Glue. And then I have some thread and a needle just in case I want to sew any beads on. That needs sewing on. And then I have cording, like hemp cord and jewelry cord. Different colors here. And then I have, in these cases here, are things like these hooks here that I use. This is so old. This has the sticker on it. It says, Your Scrapbook Superstore. I'm telling you, in previous videos, that's where I got a lot of stuff 20 years ago. That's more than 20 years now. And these boxes also have other things that you could use for, for your bead making. Like, there's some more hooks there. And there's pin backs in here. It's jewelry making stuff. And this is also something I might use, which has things in it like charms. This is a house charm. I think this actually opens. Yep, it does. It's kind of cool. It's magnetized. And you know, there's uh, hearts and keys. This is a heart. Key. That kind of thing in here. Okay, and then the last thing, I think it's the last thing, is beads and I'll just show you a small case I've got a big one down here but these are just beads that you might want to use for making the project okay so now let me get all this cleaned up and I will show you what I do I also have fibers aside that I might use to wrap around my beads I love using these fibers okay so let me get the rest of this cleaned up and we'll get started so the first thing I want to do is pick out my fabric that I'm going to use. And like I said, I've got a bin here that's got fabric in it, fabric strips or scraps or whatever. Um, this is something I might use. It's already a strip. Let me back out a little bit so you can see better. This is already a strip and I will not, I, I will not cut this down. I will use this exactly the way it is. I will make this a, a wider bead. You might, if you want to, cut this down to center so you have, or tear it if it'll tear it properly for you, uh, to make a smaller bead. But I will use this just the way it is because, like I said, the easier, the better, the faster, the better, and the more fun it makes it for me. Um, then let's see. This piece here I really like. It's 
odd at one end and odd at the other and thick in the middle so who knows what we'll get but we might try that one and let's see how many we're gonna make today but here's a piece of brown we can pull that out and see we, we might not make all these but I'm just gonna pull out some so you'll see here could be a small bead and it's got oranges and purples really pretty I also might incorporate laces in mine or odd pieces of like uh, eyelet or ribbons. I've also used ribbons around some of mine and I don't know if you noticed it when I showed them to you but the example would be this one here. This has ribbon. There's a ribbon on both sides of this blue ribbon here. Okay, and then I just sewed beads on the outside. So we might use that. Uh, we might use this little piece here. And let's see if there's any more strips we can grab real easy. Here's a brown one. We've already got a brown, but that's okay. There's a pink one, but I don't know. Well, we might use that. I'll pull it out. I don't love the pink that much for some reason, but... There's another piece of this. And I keep this stuff in here. I don't throw it out. Sometimes I do, but sometimes I keep it just for um, making nests. If I ever make a nest, I've made some nests that have incorporated some loose threads and fibers and stuff like that in it. Um, let's see what else is in here we can use. I have some bigger pieces in here that I just threw in here because they were kind of small to use you know for anything so if you have a big piece that you want to use and I don't know if this will tear the right way because I think the grain is running opposite I don't think I can tear it this way we'll try but I would take my fabric and just cut it where I think I want it and then I would just rip it and I don't think this is gonna oh it's gonna rip okay so now I have a piece that's bigger at one end and it actually is smaller at the other so I might use that I like this purple so let's cut a piece of that and make it mm, smaller okay so I think we've got enough to get started I might want a little of this the more raggedy, the more uh, threads showing, the better I like it. Okay, we'll start with these. We may not use them all, but we have something to work with. Okay, so then, come down a little bit now that that box is out of the way. Not too far. Um, let's make one of these first. Let's do let's do this one. So this is a rather wide one and so I kind of want I want to use the whole piece. I'm not measuring lengths. If it's long, it's long. Now the one I might cut is this one here. This one is rather long and it would make a really thick bead so I probably would cut this off but I would probably wrap first and then decide how big I want the, the bead and then cut it. So, but this one here I'm not cutting and it's a thinner fabric, so I think it'll be fine. I'm going to use the big dowel. If you want yours more stable, you might wrap some cardstock or paper around here and get it glued together first to make your tube and then start wrapping your fabric. And then when you slide it off, your tube inside will be more secure, more stiff, and that might keep your bead from bending. Or you could use um, straws or something like that. I've got some really thick. Uh, big round straws from um, when I used to drink bubble tea a while back and they would make great tubes but I'm not gonna make tubes I'm just gonna go for it like this and I just take my dowel and I start my fabric here and I just kind of get it tight and then pull and wrap and tuck that in and a lot of my beads I just wrapped and wrapped until I was done and then glued but if you wanted to really make sure that it was kind of secure inside the hole of the bead, you could go ahead and put a little line of glue here now. Don't put too much. 
because it'll stick to your dowel and you won't get the bead off because I don't slide my bead off my dowel right away. Okay, so let's go ahead and just wrap it. I don't move the strings until later, if at all. And we're at the end now. So now I'm going to put more glue. And then I let it seal shut. Okay? So now my dowel is holding my bead. And it'll slide off. It's not glued on. But I leave it on here because I want to decorate the bead while it's on the dowel. And the reason I do that is because I don't secure the inside of my holes. And that's just my own preference. You can do what you want to do. Anything goes. You don't have to be limited. There are really no rules. It's just do your own thing. You know, it really is. So I'm going to let this dry for a second. I want the glue to be dry before I do anything else, just in case I want to slide my needle through or anything. But I leave it on here, let it dry. So let's make a smaller one. And since this is a small piece of fabric, we'll use the small dowel, so we'll get a bigger bead. Because if I use a big dowel, it'll take up more of the fabric as I wrap. And this one, I'm going to do the same thing. Start it on. You can start it either direction. I go both ways when I wrap my beads, because it depends on what's most comfortable at the time. I'm not putting any glue in here at all until I get to the end. Because I look at it this way. This is scrap. You might have thrown this away normally. And if it falls apart, so what? Take it apart and put it back together again and do a better job next time or do it different next time. But until it falls apart on me, it's a perfectly good bead as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I want to go the opposite direction because this side's a little thicker or a little wider. As I was wrapping, what happened was I started with the smaller end. It's not much different, so it was hard to tell. I started with the smaller end, so the wide end was covering the small end. and I really want the small end to show more. So I think it's prettier that way. Unless it's the same size all the way up, and then it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just going to wrap it around. And I pull a little bit as I wrap. I hold onto this and kind of pull the fabric so it doesn't slide around your dowel, because if you just pull this, it'll just pull right off. And just kind of get it a little tight. It doesn't have to be perfectly tight. And I get to the end and I put a little bit more glue. Okay. So now we have two beads in the making. Okay. So let's go ahead and use this dowel since we've got it sitting here while the other one's dry. And let's do... Let's do this one because it looks really pretty. Do I want that in there? So they're both about the same size at the end, so we'll just go ahead and start wrapping. And like I said, if you want to, at this, like in the middle part, just put a little glue. Some I do, some I don't. There's no rhyme or reason to why. It's just maybe for some reason something prompts me and I say, hmm, I better put some glue on this one. I don't know why. Maybe the bigger ones I put glue on, I really can't tell you. It's just a it's just a feeling. And this is at the point where if you wanted to, you could wrap something into this like this, this ribbon. like this, or you could wrap it around later. But I think what I want to do is leave this out because I really don't want it on there. I'll put it on something else. Okay, we got three beads ready to go. This one is pretty dry now, 
So now I need to decide what do I want to do to this one. It's got pinks and white, a little bit of darker pink in there. So I, hmm, I've got a little piece of ribbon here that I could wrap around the middle. I like that. So I think what I'll do is I'll use this and I'll wrap around the bead. So I put glue all the way around. You can do it in sections if you want to. And then I'm going to grab hold there and wrap it. I think I'll just go all the way around with it and use the whole piece. I think that's what I'll do. So when I get to the end, I glue that on. Okay, so I want that to sit for a second and let that dry. And on this one here, I don't know. I'm still I'm still kind of going back to this ribbon here. No, I think no. Okay. So now I I want to decide what I want to do the rest of these. I think on this one I'm going to put fiber, and because it's gluing, I think I can go ahead and put the fiber on, and it'll be all right. So let's pull some fiber out and see if we like one of these with this. If we don't, we can always go and get some more because I have more in a drawer. This one has, no, I don't like these. Okay, let me go find another one. Okay, I found this pink fiber in my drawer that I like. And this is not real pink, the ribbon I used, but it's okay because it all blends together. And I think it looks kind of funky when you do that. So I don't mind it. So I leave a little bit of a string hanging loose because I want to tie this. I'm going to glue and tie. And I'm going to cross over that string so it kind of holds on. Hang on. Get started again. Okay. I'm going to cross over the string just to hold it on there while I wrap. Okay. And then just start wrapping and I'll cross over a few times and I'll zigzag and go back and forth and whatever suits my fancy and I may not see this ribbon underneath here anymore when I'm done I'm okay with that it was just a starter reference point something to trigger the next step but I might see it you never know so then I'll cut my ribbon I'll leave another tail leave enough to tie And then I'm just going to tie my ribbon, not ribbon, my trim. I keep calling it ribbon, sorry. I'm going to tie my trim on. But I'm going to put a little dab of glue in there. Just so that when I tie it, it'll stay tied and won't unravel and have a better chance of staying on the bead. With what I'm doing with my beads, I'm not rough on them. I'm not going to be using them for other weird things that could cause them to fall apart, so it's okay. And I might tie it on the other side too, since I have enough left. And then I'll put a little dab of glue on top of the knot. That'll dry clear. And you can trim your tails if you want to or leave them hanging loose. Sometimes I leave them, sometimes I trim them. And we've got one bead made, but I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and show you after it's dried what it looks like. Okay, on this one. I've got some trims here that have purple in them, so maybe something here will look good. This pink rickrack might be cute. 
there's this one and then there's this one here I'm not sure which one I like yet this one doesn't show up a lot because of the purples and greens mixing in it would be pretty but I'm still not gonna do it I think I'll put this one on so I'm gonna wrap this on here and I'm gonna put a little dab of glue on the tip to hold it on and I just wrap it Okay, and that's probably enough. And I just glue my tip on. Okay. Now, if you need something to be held on while you're letting it dry, um, take a pin and pin it on there but I usually just sit and hold it for a second and it'll it'll take so while I'm holding this I will take a break okay the glue's caught on a little bit so I can let go of it now that's what it looks like and I'm gonna put some more on it I'm gonna take this fiber here because I love the fibers on here on the beads I think that's just really pretty so I'm going to wrap my fibers around this one and whatever shows shows whatever doesn't show doesn't show I'm sticking more in the center on this one than I did the other one so you'll see both the fiber and you'll see the fabric and you'll see the ribbon so I kind of was a little more careful there okay now I'm going to put a little dab of glue right where my knot's going to go. Okay, so that'll dry and my knot should stay. Even if I even if my knot came apart, the fiber should stay on there because that glue should hold it. All right, and just for extra security, a little bit more right there on top just to keep it from raveling apart. Sometimes you tie something in a knot and it stays. Sometimes you tie something in a knot and depending on what it is, it could loosen itself and just come open. So there's our other bead. And the other one's still drying, so we're gonna set this out to dry too. So we have one more here. This little orange one and we need to decide to do what to do with him he needs a little something and I don't really want to sew beads on because um, I really like the fibers and stuff but he needs a little something this red rickrack might be cute and let's see no we don't want that Let's see what the pink rickrack looks like. The pink rickrack is okay, but no. Maybe we'll use the red rickrack. That's what I'll do. Okay. Glue. See how easy this is? wrap it a few times and then I'll cut my sometimes I cut it first and sometimes I don't right now I think I'll cut it I 
this is just a little baby bee. He's very, he's very basic. He hasn't grown his fibers yet. So he's not going to have any fibers till he gets bigger. <laughs> okay. So there's the little baby bead. Okay. So let me take a second and uh, I might wrap up a few more and fast forward just so you can see. But I think you get the just so far of the steps, the first steps that I take. Okay. So I'm going to take these off. They're still drying. This glue's still white, but it is going to be clear when I'm finished, when it's finished. And but right now I'm going to slide this off, and that's all I do is slide it off. So there's my hole, and there's my bead. We'll set it aside, and this one here the same thing. Now there's a bunch of strings here. I need to bring the strings with it, and I'll trim those off if I want to. Probably will on this one. So far, this is my favorite one. I love this one of today's beads. I have other favorites and ones I've already made. And this one here, I'll go ahead and slide it off because it can finish drying on its own. Okay, so a little baby bead. All right, let me wrap a few more. And if I do something different than what I've showed you already, I will stop and I will tell you what I'm doing, okay? So this one here, I put on the fabric, then I put on some crochet trim, and now what I want to do is I'm going to sew some beads on this one. And I have these little tiny beads, they are called Fashion Glass, these are Purple Glass E beads. I got them at Tuesday morning a long time ago. So. What I want to do, I also, I had thread out here, but since I brought my needle over, it already had brown thread in it from something else I'm working on. So I decided just to leave the brown thread in because the fabric's brown and I don't think it'll matter against the purple. I think purple and brown look really good together. So I don't have to thread my needle, thank goodness. <laughs> the less I have to thread a needle, the better. So I'm just going to pull some out in my hand because not all of them will... Actually, let me get my glass bowl. So I put my beads in a glass bowl just so I can get them better. You can use whatever you want. And my needle won't go through every bead. Some of them it won't go through, but most of them it will. So what I'm going to do is I knotted the end of my thread so that I can slide this needle somewhere up into the fabric or trim or wherever that it can go. So my knotted end will go up under and hide so you don't see the knot. And then I'm just going to pick up some beads and I picked up two this time. Sometimes I just pick up just one. And then I go back in close by and come out somewhere else. Just like that. Okay, then I'll pick up two more. I like the twos, so we'll stick with two. 
and then I'll go back down into my fabric close at where I came out but not exact and go out somewhere else and I'm just going to do that through the rest of the bead wherever I feel like I want something and I might pick up three beads I might pick up one right now I'm sticking with two because I like it and just go back down close where I'm at and come back out somewhere else until I cover the entire bead. So we'll finish this and fast forward since you don't need to see me do every single step, but I do want you to see the process so that in case you have, you know, so that you can get an idea what to do. Okay, so that's what we're getting. Then I just tie off my thread wherever I feel like. In this case, I did it on the lace, and you can probably see it a little bit, but you know, it's just a bead. Who cares? So let's see. I'll give you a close up. I just added a little something to it, just by putting some beads on. It's made it cuter. I could put fibers on it now, but I don't want to cover the beads too much, so we're going to say this one's done. Slide it off. Okay. Something else I wanted to share with you is occasionally if I have a ribbon that's refusing to stay down in a timely fashion, which for me is like a second. <laughs> I'll take a clamp that I got and these you can get some of these um, something like this at Harbor Freight but I actually got these at the grocery store at a Publix grocery store and it's in the automotive section I think or you know where they have odd things electrical things light bulb things like that they just had these and they work really good and they were only a dollar for two I think so it was really inexpensive and a, and a good good tool to have so I'm going to let that sit for a second, and I'm trying to decide what to do with this little guy. This is actually a genuine, <laughs> it's a genuine um, vintage feed sack used years ago for whatever they put in this feed sack, and it was beautiful. I've got a big, huge, well, I've got the whole feed sack, but I just cut into it yesterday to work on something I'm working on and this is one of the scraps and I just love it. I've had it for years. I got it a long time ago and I just couldn't bear to cut it but I thought you know what joy am I getting from it just sitting in the closet so I cut it up and I'm making something with it and now I have a bead from one of the scraps and I love it and I love using it so and when it's gone I'll just be on the hunt for some more feed sack. Bailey's here she wants her lunch. So I don't know if this one's going to get anything on it. It's so small, but it kind of needs something. This would be cute if I could get it to stay on. Maybe I just tie it on. Maybe I'll do that. Put some glue just to help it. the center kind of hold it on there once it's tied I'm just going to tie a knot in the center of this bead I do want a little glue in the middle of the knot though the way it's fraying there so we're gonna
tear that apart so that all the parts come apart. We might trim it a little bit depending on what we use it for. But for now, we're just going to leave it like that. And uh, we'll trim it. <laughs> it needs to be a little shorter. He's a little guy. He got his fibers early. Just a simple little something to make it look a little prettier. Okay. So now we have what's left. The one that I just put the clamp on. Let's see if that did any good. It may take a little while for this ribbon. So I'm going to sit this here for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our our one bead that we did, and this one here, and this little orange one, and then these two here. So we did five beads, no, six beads. I've got one off to the side. This one here, and this one. So that's our beads. Now, I didn't tell you about this in the beginning because I hadn't planned on using them, but I am going to be using a couple of tools. They're like jewelry tools. Uh, I don't know what they're called there, just so I can hold on to a clamp. But if you have something like that, you might need that if you're going to do something like what I'm doing. So that's how I made my fabric beads. I hope that you enjoyed it. And next week, I will show you a way that I used my beads. I've got a, a few projects that I'm doing that I'm using my beads. Uh, one in particular I will show you next week in a video and then another one will be in a, a few weeks depending on how long it takes me to get the project done. And as I do things with my beads I'll share it with you. I definitely will show you next week how I made these using my beads. Okay? So I hope to see you next week. Y'all take care. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.